when you can't trust yourself to do stuff, when you're lying to yourself, you lose any sense of, of self-integrity, right? And that's so damaging to your self-esteem. Your actions need to match your promises to yourself. What up, Casanova, and welcome to part two of my two-part guide on why you are not enough or don't think you're enough and what you can do about it. So in part one, in the last video, we talked about what it generally means not to feel enough and where this sentiment comes from. And we looked at this notion from three different perspectives, one being this idea of not being enough uh, in the marketplace, okay? Kind of taking an objective look at where you stand relative to others in a certain kind of area of interest, whether it's the dating world, whether it's you know some kind of a, a business niche, whether it's a sport, whatever it is that you're interested in achieving, gauging um, where you are, where you wanna be, and how you need to close that gap and being somewhat in tune with the reality of the situation. The second thing that we looked at is the perspective of why you don't think you're good enough to take action today or take action consistently. And lastly, why you may never, why you may never think that you're good enough and where that sentiment comes from. So if you haven't watched that video, go check it out. It will help you navigate your situation a lot better and gain a lot of insight on you know, where these feelings of not being enough come from, what's motivating them. A lot of it is you know, childhood stuff, uh, your upbringing, conditioning, experiences you've had, uh, beliefs you've formed over the years, et cetera, et cetera. In this video, what I wanna talk about is a more actionable, um, this, this is supposed to be a more actionable guide on how to start feeling like you're enough, how to build your self-esteem, because that's what this is all really about. Because at the end of the day, what is self-esteem, right? Well, it has two main components. One is this idea of self-efficacy, okay? This confidence, you know, that's innate or that's built, usually it's built over time, this confidence in our ability to think and cope with the challenges of life. It's this conviction that we are able to adapt to any environment, to take up new challenges, that trust that we can you know, get shit done, right? And that's a big part of core confidence. And the other part of self-esteem is self respect. It's the conviction of our own value and worth, right? Of our inherent worth as a human being, you know, the idea that we exist, therefore we are worthy by the virtue of our existence. We exist, therefore we matter. Entitled to, to be able to assert our needs and wants, to achieve our own values, okay? To enjoy the fruits of life, to have that kind of inherent, let's say, right. It's knowing that our happiness and fulfillment is something important to work for, right? But we do have to work for it. So it's like we inherently deserve it and we're worthy just, just the way we are, but we also have to work for, work for achieving it in the marketplace in some sense. All of us inherently have this general sense of worthiness of being loved does not mean that that is not the same thing I should say as a worthiness in the marketplace right and and it's very key to differentiate those two because some girl that you talk to may not necessarily find you worthy because maybe you haven't worked on yourself you don't have a certain kind of confidence demeanor etc cetera, etc cetera. and this is where staying in tune with the realities of the marketplace are so important.
choices. So essentially, by telling yourself that you are inherently enough, you will be able to take action from a positive place, from a deserving, worthy place, and you know, take consistent action so that you can become enough in the marketplace, enough for the kind of you know, reality that you want to build, the kind of lifestyle that you want to build, the kind of skill set, business, dating life that you want to build. Okay? So again, you want to start off by saying you are inherently enough, but then also do the work to become enough in the eyes of the market. And sometimes you see people do one and not the other. Sometimes you see people just tell, tell themselves, oh, I am enough, I am enough, but then they actually don't do the work and they're completely out of touch with the market or they're in denial. On the other hand, you have the people who do the work, who are moving towards this you know, vision that they've, that they've set for themselves, but they don't think that they're inherently enough. They're working from a place of, of complete lack, right? And they're so attached to this ideal that they've set for themselves, this benchmark in the marketplace, where only then they will feel inherently worthy and enough. Okay, and that is also very problematic. So you want to marry those two things, that self-respect and that, that confidence and the ability to be able to kind of tackle challenges and navigate through life. So self-efficacy and self-respect. Okay, so to help you understand what comprises your self-esteem or you know, what you need to do to help evolve your self-esteem, I've drawn on the principles from the book, uh, The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. So we're gonna look at six different things that six pillars that you, know, you, you go through and it's kind of a cyclical thing. You go through them in a certain order, but it's a cycle that continues. Okay, um, that continues as you evolve, as you go through life. So let's get into it. The first thing is practicing self-inquiry. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means, you know, being more, taking a more active approach in life versus a passive one. Okay, active, proactive, asking yourself questions about who you are, where you stand, you know, doing an audit of your life, of your personality, of your beliefs, of your upbringing, you know, what, what fuels some of these beliefs, of your experiences, accomplishments, failures, right? Just doing kind of an, an audit, and it's kind of an ongoing audit, right? Like I said, this is a cyclical thing. So it's, it's about you know, actively looking into understanding who you are and what your place is in the world, right? It's, it's also being honest, really uh, brutally honest with yourself, right? This is key to help yourself understand these things and to come to terms with certain realities. Yo, quick announcement, my dude. Just want to briefly mention that over the last year, many guys have been asking me, how do you create chemistry with women? And this has sadly been exaggerated by the pandemic. That's right, I'm talking about that magic you see me create with the girls in my videos. So, I've decided to give away a super entertaining, uncut, infield bonus video showing exactly that. Just click on the link in the description below. By signing up, you're also joining the VIP list for our, wait for it, new course. Honest Chemistry, which will be released in the next month and will teach you everything to do with creating chemistry from sexual tension to an amazing connection. This course has been more than a year in the making and I'm really excited to release it. So be sure to click the link in the description box or comment section below to get access to your bonus video today and stay in the loop. All right, now let's get back into it. It's also being open, open-minded, challenging old assumptions, being open to new knowledge, new information, new ways of thinking, so you're not stuck, right, in some kind of, in some kind of narrative that you're telling yourself, some some poor belief system that's that's weighing you down, right? Trying to differentiate reality, reality, right? I always say that because we, we all kind of manifest our own reality, and it's hard to get an objective gauge. But 
to try to get a general, you know, as close to an objective gauge on reality as possible and reconciling that with some emotions you might have on the matter, right? Because you're obviously very biased, you're invested into your own narrative, into, um, into your current situation in life. Some people, you know, find it, um, find it a lot easier to be honest with themselves and some struggle more with that because, you know, it's a, it's a coping mechanism, right? When you tell yourself all these lies, it's easier to sleep at night. It's, uh, it's easier not to have to take responsibility, face your demons, etc. So making that distinction between, you know, your emotional interpretation of things and reality is important. It's also trying to understand how we're generally operating. Are we generally operating from a place of fear? Okay, or some perceived internal lack? Or are we operating from a place of love, abundance? You know, the optimism to improve your life. And sometimes they go hand in hand. Like, as I said in, in my first video, Sometimes, you know, you're fueled by some uh, negative emotions, the need to step up in life, you know, the need to become more confident, um, to assert your place in the world because you felt second class, because you've been, you know, cheated on, taken advantage of. Um, you don't, you know, it can go deeper than that. You don't feel like you're worthy. Uh, because you never got the love you received as a child, et cetera, et cetera. So it's understanding what fuels some of these intentions and motivations in your life, you know, where it's all coming from, so that you can then self-adjust your actions, your goals, your, your visions, to make sure that they are coming from the right place. Even if sometimes some of our negative experiences can be a good push a good form of emotional leverage to to wake up, to become in tune with reality, to step up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But generally, you want to be operating from a place of love, optimism, from a place of I'm already good, but how do I make life better? Okay, it doesn't mean that, and we'll get into this later. It doesn't mean that you should be okay, that you should like some of these things about yourself. Okay. Um, no, it just means being an acceptance of your general state, but also striving for more. So this also helps you understand what are needs and what are wants. What you think are needs may actually be wants. You know, generally we, we shouldn't need a lot of things, right? We should reframe things uh, as wants instead so that we don't become attached to certain ideals that we've created in our minds, some arbitrary markers that I talked about in the first video, uh, arbitrary markers of success or, or of what feeling good enough is and telling yourself that you need this thing, you, know, you need the, the one million YouTube subscribers, okay, or you need the seven, seven figure business, or you need the beautiful model girlfriend. No, you want it. That's a healthier way of approaching. It would be cool to have this will be interesting to see if I can build this business, if I can build this Instagram following, okay? If I can meet and attract these, this kind of caliber of women and have cool experiences, but not like, oh my God, my life depends on it. My sense of worth depends on it, okay? That perpetuates a, a kind of a toxic um, suffering. A toxic mentality is a constant state of suffering of never feeling good enough, which we talked about in the first video. So lastly, it's just generally making a commitment to want to learn and to grow. Okay, so the second pillar is self-acceptance. And that means that you need to be on your side. If you don't step up for yourself, right? If you don't fight for what you want, nobody else will. So you need to be on your side, okay? Gotta be rooting for you. Second of all, you need to self-accept, right? You need to be in acceptance of who you are, where you stand, what you want, what you don't want, your desires, your willingness. You shouldn't be in denial about some kind of a reality that you're in. So it's like a very honest 
Um, you know, we talked about auditing your situation and self-inquiry. Well, here it's it's presenting that audit and really accepting it. Okay, this is it. This is the reality. Okay, and the you know the third point is having compassion. Having compassion. We're so hard on ourselves. You know, we could we could be in tune with the reality of our situation, but we can be so harsh with ourselves, so unforgiving for the mistakes we've made, for how fucked up our lives have been. You know how much we're missing, how much we're lacking. You're such a piece of shit, right? We need to be not only on our side, but compassionate towards our situation because if we're not, you know, nobody else will. You are the person that cares about you most. So this is very important, working on loving and accepting yourself. Now, I want to make a distinction here. This does not mean that you need to like, like where you currently are. You need to like your situation. You can be grateful, you can be appreciative, you can have compassion and all that stuff, but you don't need to like it necessarily, right? And like, what does it mean to like? Well, it's like you could have wants, you could want to improve your life. That's the whole point of this. So the two aren't necessarily in conflict with one another. When I say work on loving and accepting yourself, it means being patient with yourself, being compassionate with yourself, being forgiving of yourself and of your situation. But at the same time, you could desire more. You could want more as long as it's coming from a good place, not to try to, you know, fill some internal, internal lack and sometimes it starts off that way, but it kind of evolves, you know, over time. But that, that compassion is, is very key. And, you know, when you're, when you're looking at your situation, you want to acknowledge your strengths and weaknesses. You know, don't just focus on the weaknesses. Don't just focus on the, um, the things that are missing. Be grateful for the things that you have. Be grateful for the strengths that you have. The skills that you already possess. We usually sell ourselves so fucking short. So acknowledge that shit and you know detach from any kind of rigid identity especially victimizing yourself don't victimize yourself don't say well I'm this person you know who's such a victim of his upbringing or situation or life circumstances I'm so wounded I'm so damaged I'm such a I'm such a lost cause you know no accept the things that have happened to you but don't don't see yourself as a victim okay life just happens to us life just happens to us this idea of being a victim is actually um, is actually very self defeating. It's a very it's very negative. Life happens to us. Okay, if you go and stand under the rain and it rains on you, you're not going to tell yourself you were a victim of um, of the rain, right? But it's a lot easier to say, well, I was a victim of bullying. Yes, you may have had somebody bully you. It was kind of like a force of life that happened. Somebody was acting in a certain way because, because of their own fucked up, you know, reality and, and uh, wiring and motivations and all that shit. And they were taking that anger out on you. And, you know, that's an unfortunate thing, but you weren't, don't think of yourself as a victim. Okay. Life happened. Um, so this is a powerful reframe. So don't attach to any kind of negative identity and say, I'm this type of way, or I'm that type of way, um, it creates a very, you know, it can become very rigid and make it very difficult for you to change. So I want you to understand that this unconditional positive love that you want to have for yourself is not some form of rationalization. Like I said, it just is an acceptance and compassion for, for who you are. Uh, it doesn't take away from your willingness to want to achieve more. But if you operate from this sense of well-being and inherent self-worth where you tell yourself inherently I am worthy and I accept my situation and I love myself um, even though you know a bunch of shit has happened to me you tell yourself I'm generally worthy even you know even though in your childhood you might not have gotten the love you deserved or over the course of your life you don't feel like you know, you were, that you were worthy and deserving of love and success and happiness and all that, you need to tell yourself that you inherently are. 
And so what that changes is, it makes the doing and the achieving and the, you know, the, all this change that you're going through, the, the acquiring of new skills and new ideas and new beliefs, new identities and all that, you know, that, that it starts to come from, from our, let's say, our authentic core, our inher inherent sense of self-worth, okay, not from some sense of lack. So maybe this is, sounds a little bit convoluted, but essentially tell yourself that on, that at the base level, I matter, I am worthy of love, even though I, have, I may not have experienced it in my childhood or whatever, uh, and I've had a lot of fucked up programming, let's reprogram ourselves right now. I am worthy of happiness and love, just inherently, just as a virtue of, our, of my existence. I also recognize where I am in the marketplace. I recognize where I stand. I recognize there might be a gap from between where I am and where I want to be as far as the kind of lifestyle results I want, the kind of person I want to be in general, right? I see this gap. So I already feel like I am worthy, but now let me just try to close the... So inherently, existentially, I am worthy, but now let me just try to close that market gap of worthy. And it's coming from a place of, of want. It's not coming from a place of lack. Right, so that's a very powerful reframe where you don't feel like your, your entire identity is attached to this, this potential change that's going to happen. And that's, that's going to prevent you from, that's gonna allow you to, to, to give yourself this permission to act, okay? And to feel happy along the way, to feel happy with the changes, as opposed to constantly saying, no, I am short of this, this bar that I've said, I am short, therefore I am not happy, therefore my self-esteem is shit, et cetera, et cetera. So, like I said, these reframes are very, very important. The next pillar is self-responsibility. And this essentially means that you recognize that no one owes you anything. No one owes you anything. I always said, the only person that cares about you is you. You have to be on your team. You have to fight your own battles. You have to fight for what you want in the world. You have to fight for this, you know, this, this happiness that you inherently deserve, okay? This, this love, this, this personal growth that you are worthy of, that you want to achieve. So you got to, you got to, um, you gotta make shit happen. You gotta generate that motivation from within, but don't rely on it because it's fleeting. So what you need to do to keep it going is you need to take action. Action creates motivation. Remember that I, I say this, I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. Action creates motivation. So stop sitting around, you've done this audit. Okay, you've accepted blah, 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 but stop sitting around and just pontificating and dwelling and ruminating, stressing about the future, fearing you may never reach your potential, fearing you know that this project of self-realization or self-improvement is so daunting. Take fucking responsibility for everything in your life, for everything, everything in your life that you do, you gotta take complete ownership for. That then leads to you know, that then sets up a foundation for self-empowerment. Okay, the next pillar, self-empowerment. What happens here is you are giving yourself permission to act. I say this all the time, give yourself permission. I am giving you permission to give yourself permission. Sometimes you need to hear it from an authority figure, from an influencer, from a guru. Sometimes you need to hear it from them. You need to hear, you need to get that permission from them. That's what students really want, really need. Um, well, one of the things that they get when they do coaching with me is I'm there to metaphorically hold their hand through the process and kind of give them permission every step of the way to change their beliefs, push their, uh, their boundaries and their comfort zones, create these new realities for themselves, okay? Put themselves in situations they didn't think was possible. But after that, they need to start giving themselves permission. Right? And in general, you got to start practicing giving yourself permission because the world will not give it to you. And sure, some people naturally feel more confident about 
you know, they feel like they, ha they, they, they have the world's permission. It's easier for them to give themselves permission because, you know, maybe they're better looking, maybe they're naturally more charismatic, blah, blah, blah. And so better childhood, better upbringing, more love, whatever it is. Um, and so they find it easier to give themselves permission. But at the end of the day, it's all about giving yourself permission. So yes, yeah, some people have it harder. Well, don't cry about it. Step up, start giving yourself permission. Build that muscle. Okay, start identifying as an action taker. We talked about this in the first video. Right, change your identity from, I'm a passive spectator to, no, I'm an action taker. I'm a participant. Okay, this is very key. Practice being bold and assertive. Practice. And as you do that, you're going to get more positive feedback from the world that you're, that you're taking action, that you're you know, self-empowering yourself, and that you're allowed to. You're going to see more and more evidence in your life, in your reality, that it's okay to give yourself permission. You're allowed. In fact, it's almost going to, it's almost going to feel as if the world is encouraging it. It's going to feel good. And resist those demons in your head that are going to tell you, no, no, no. You're a little piece of shit. And you can't take permission. You can't, sorry, give yourself permission. Who are you to give yourself permission, right? Resist that, those demons. They're going to try to weigh you down. Because the demons, why are the demons there? Why are they doing that? Why do you have these negative beliefs? Why do they pop up? Why do these... Why do we look for these signs in our reality, or sorry, in, in, our, in our lives to reaffirm this reality, this negative narrative? It's because this is, this is our, often our baseline. This is what we've become accustomed to, right? We feel comfortable, you know, sitting with these core beliefs. That's, that's actually the harsh reality. We feel comfortable sitting with some of these uh, negative beliefs because they're so deeply ingrained in us as a, as a result of the shit that's happened to us. We often reenact um, a lot of these traumas that we've had in our, in our lives because we haven't processed them, we haven't moved past them, we haven't forgiven ourselves or forgiven other people. We don't realize sometimes that we're stuck in these negative loops, these trauma reenactments, these, these baselines of, of misery and, and victimhood that keep us stuck. So, self-empowerment is key. And what does that lead to? You guessed it, self-improvement. Woo! -hoo. Yeah, self-development, I'm self-improving. So, what does that mean? That means doing shit, working on your shit, working on your inner shit, okay? Fucking on your traumas, on your insecurities, on your fears, on your demons. Getting some fucking therapy, doing trauma release, okay? Explore different, different types of therapy. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy, there's psychodynamic therapy, deals more with processing our emotions and, sorry, processing our traumas by going back into our childhood and then feeling those emotions, processing them, releasing them, and then taking on a kind of a new perspective. Okay, so understanding where a lot of the shit is coming from that's fucking us up so that you can release it and then rewire yourself in a new healthy way. On top of that, it's building certain skills, working on your personality, whatever it is that you want to work on. If you're working on your success in your dating life, right? Well, it's understanding what's important, your personality, your core masculine qualities, your honest signals, okay? Your ability to communicate, your ability to understand male, female dynamics. Um, how to become more charismatic, how to speak in a more engaging manner, okay, how to put yourself on the line, how to be more bold, okay. Any kind of skill that you need to build up, well, you have to actively build on it and you need to engage with what's called deliberate practice. 
not regular practice, but deliberate practice. Regular practice means you're mindlessly just going through the motions and just doing things, for the, practicing for the sake of practicing, okay? And then giving yourself this false sense of accomplishment. Oh, I went out, I talked to some girls. I went out three times and I talked to some girls. Okay, cool, but are you actually learning something from your experiences? Are you actually trying to improve something, trying to draw some conclusions? Are you proactively trying to analyze your interactions? Right, so that's where deliberate practice comes in. It, it's this like very proactive approach where you're analyzing, you're questioning, you're constantly pushing what you think is possible, you're exploring, you're experimenting, you're, 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 you're focused on actually making some kind of a positive change and making sure that what you're doing is productive, constructive. And this of course ties in with the idea that you need to set goals. They need to break things down into actionable steps. You need to build routines, you need to build habits, right? So this goes hand in hand with deliberate practice. Okay, I'm not just like, oh, I'm gonna go out every now and again and do some stuff. Oh, you know, if you're building a body, if you're working out, wanna build a certain kind of body, you're not just like, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym a couple of times, lift some weights, just kinda go through the motions. You're trying to build a YouTube channel. Oh, I'm just gonna like put out some some videos, I don't know, on on boats, you know, or wh whatever topic you're interested in. No, it's it's trying to understand. Okay, what's what content is interesting? What's not? How do I improve my delivery? How do I improve the editing? How do I make things more engaging? How do I hook my audience? How do I explore certain kind of topics in a way that's novel? So self improvement is proactive work. Proactive work and being in tune with, like I say, what is going on in the marketplace, where you stand in the marketplace, right? That helps you stay kind of grounded. So you're not just like loosely drifting through life, telling yourself you're improving, right? And so, you know, another big part of this is monitoring your behavior, monitoring your results, seeing what kind of progress you're making. Also remember, action creates motivation. Action creates motivation. When you take action, you feel more motivated to take more action because you have more trust in your ability to get shit done, trust in the process, trust in your ability to overcome, you know, tough negative, um, you know, or resistance, negative emotions, right? Demons in your mind. To, to build momentum on a certain task, right? To get into flow. Action creates motivation. This brings us into the last pillar, which I call self-accountability. Now we said that we wanna take place, or sorry, we wanna take action from a place of kindness, kindness to ourselves, compassion, and acceptance of our situation. We just wanna improve. We just wanna improve, not like, oh, you're such a piece of shit. Um, you know, you're so worthless. You know, you're not gonna hate yourself into loving yourself. You have to love yourself into loving yourself. This is very important. You're not going to hate yourself into loving yourself. You can only love yourself into loving yourself. Right, so we're taking action from a place of self-kindness, but we're keeping ourselves in fucking check. So not only is it important to have deliberate practice, but you know, you gotta keep yourself in check. You have to know that your word means something. A lot of people's word doesn't mean shit. And forget how that looks in other people's eyes. Okay, yes, it's bad. But more than that, how does it look in your eyes? When you can't trust yourself to do stuff, when you're lying to yourself, you lose any sense of, of self-integrity, right? And that's so damaging to your self-esteem. Your actions need to match your promises to yourself. So you cannot behave in a way that is in conflict with your values and principles. You need to be a man of integrity. Again, first and foremost to yourself and also to others. I, I hate it when people like say they're gonna do something and then they don't. It's just, uh, it's, it's just unattractive, unreliable, pathetic. It's like you say you're gonna do something, fucking do it. And what's worse is you know, don't, definitely do not engage in this. Don't lie 
to yourself. Don't lie to others and especially not to yourself and don't try to sell yourself or sell the idea that you're changing to others when in reality you're not. It's like it's almost like you're trying to sell yourself on the idea that you're changing, you're making all this progress because deep down you you're probably not but you're, you're spinning the slide of yourself, this narrative, oh, I'm making all this change, and then you're telling others around you that you're doing this, almost to get, to get them to validate that and to acknowledge it, almost, and, and then what does that do that, that, that helps you, um, that helps support this narrative that you're spinning to yourself? It's almost like external evidence that, yeah, in fact, you are changing. Hey, man, I've been going to the gym, like, so consistently lately, I don't know if you've noticed, but, like, I've been, you know, like I've been getting a lot bigger. Do you see that I've gotten bigger? And then somebody might almost be like, oh, I don't know, maybe like, I, I, I think so, right? When you're kind of forcing this reality on, on someone, they might be inclined to say, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, you, your voice does seem a little different or you do seem a little more confident. Like I've had people try to do that to me. It's, it's really annoying, right? Just don't, don't talk about your success and your growth to other people. Don't try to sell sell them on it. It almost feels like you're compensating for something, okay? So be brutally honest with yourself. I always, I remember when I used to go out and when I used to try to improve my social skills, meeting women and all that, I used to be really honest with myself. I used to, if I knew deep down that I wasn't like pushing myself, really pushing myself to try new things, to engage in deliberate practice, it's like I knew, you know, I knew and I, and, and I would acknowledge it, I told myself. It's like, if you feel that you're not, it's because you're not. So don't try to make up for that by rationalizing. It's just, it's awful. You need to, you know when you go to the gym and you feel like you've had a solid fucking workout, like a solid fucking workout, right? Or you did like a good day of work in your business or let's, you know, a week of work in your business. Like you've really made some shit happen. Sometimes it's hard to kind of gauge that, right? It, it, it is hard, like, what is something substantial, but you generally have like a good gauge of like, yo, I'm making some moves here, right? Um, similarly, when you're going out and you're being, and you're socializing and you're meeting girls, trying to become more confident, more charismatic, you need to feel like you push yourself. You need to feel like you did some, some things different, like, like you really stretched your limits, right? You tried some new shit, you experimented, then you have like a true sense of accomplishment, right? As opposed to, oh, I just went out, talked to some girls. It's like if you're doing the same shit day in, day out, you're just banging your head against the wall hoping for better results. It's like that insanity quote by Einstein. So be brutally honest with yourself. Man, I can't, I can't stress the importance of that enough. It's like, that, that's what matters at the end of the day, you know? It's those times that you're alone with yourself late at night, and um, you're alone with your thoughts. You know, that's what matters. Where did I hear this? I heard this in a, in a, in a speech by some, some entrepreneur. I forget, but anyway, um, that's what matters at the end of the day. It's when you're alone with your thoughts, with your honest thoughts about where you're at, right? And the promises that you've made yourself and whether you've followed through on those promises on the changes you wanted to make, on whether you're happy doing the things that you do or whether you're living some kind of a fucking lie. Those are the moments that matter. It's not what you're putting out in the world, right? It's not your interaction with other people and the lies you're spinning to them. It's, it's your relationship with you. It's your self-esteem, you know, that could potentially be damaged as a result of this. Your happiness, your sense of self-worth, self right? So, self-accountability. Keep yourself in check. And I want to remind you, so we kind of, just to go through the list, recap, there's self-inquiry, self-responsibility, self-acceptance, self-empowerment, self-improvement, and lastly, self-accountability. And remember that this is a cycle, okay? You're constantly, um, you're constantly going through the cycle where you're, and it doesn't have to be in a perfect order, but when you're self-improving, when you're keeping yourself accountable, you know, it doesn't mean that you're no longer self-inquiring. It doesn't mean that you're no longer self-accepting, right, every step along the way, accepting the challenges, accepting the fuck-ups, 
right? And loving yourself in the process, being compassionate towards yourself in the process, okay? Constantly taking new responsibility, new, own, you know, new ownership for situations in life, new realities that you're in that, that you were just kind of thrown into, right? Because it's, it's not a smooth fucking process. I'm sure you've seen you know, success or, or improvement is not this like smooth curve. It's like, it's like this, right? Sometimes you feel like you're regressing. So you have to constantly be in tune with where you are internally, with where you are relative to others in the marketplace, trying to reconcile those two realities. So I hope this gives you something to work with, a good roadmap or blueprint for how to build up your self-esteem, for how to start feeling like you are good enough, like you are, in some sense, in control of your life and of your destiny. Um, go out there, implement. I promise you it'll be very rewarding. You know, change your relationship with life. Change your outlook on things. Take responsibility. Right, Your self-esteem will be built as a byproduct of that. And be, be kind to yourself. Um, you need you on your side. Can't stress that enough. You will not hate yourself into loving yourself. Okay, believe me, I made that mistake many times and it's, 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 not, it's not productive. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment below, tell me what you've enjoyed, what any questions you have, any other topics you wanna cover. Also, subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we put out new videos. Also, be sure to grab your bonus infield video and signing up for the Honest Chemistry VIP list. Link in the description in the comments section below. It'll be an amazing fucking course. I'm very excited to, uh, to be releasing it soon. So, thanks again for watching and until next time.